Our neighbor has just started tearing down the house, so uh, I need to be quick, otherwise they'll be loud again. So before we move on to some operator theory, namely uh, uh, compact operator theory, um, let's talk about th something that I've already mentioned. Why don't we solve that problem of non-invertibility just like we did in linear algebra by introducing these squares and the minimum norm solution. And let me show you what the difficulty with that approach is. So uh, let's assume we have an operator K that maps from X to Y. And uh, we'll start off with X and Y being Banner spaces. And uh, later we'll concentrate on Hilbert spaces. And let's assume that K is linear and uh, that it is continuous. Now, um, we want to deal with two problems. Uh, K might not be surjective. That means not for every element y in y, there is an x in x such that kx equals to zero. So the equation kx equals y, uh, y um, is not solvable. And it also might be not injective. So uh, there might be multiple elements in x pointing to the same element in y. Now, uh, let's look at it in the following form. We wish to solve the problem KU equals F for an F in Y and a U in X. Okay, um, now let's def give definition 2.9. Um, U is a best approximation. If and only if the norm of KU minus F in Y smaller or equal to the norm of kv minus f for all v in x. Okay, if uh, x and y are uh, Hilbert spaces, then u is called a least square solution. And this is exactly what you do for finite dimensional operators on matrices in, linear, in a numerical linear algebra. That's exactly the same definition. Now, uh, the question is, uh, is that unique? Does that at all exist, and uh, we we'll later see that both questions must be answered with no. Um, but since it's not unique, um, we already saw in uh, in the uh, in the finite dimensional case uh, how this can be treated if it's not um, if the operator is not injective. So this the first one handles not surjective. The second one handles not injective. So if we have multiple best approximations, uh, then uh, we define a, um, a vector u in x is uh, a minimum is minimal norm solution. or Moore-Penrose 
solution. If and only if norm of u is smaller or equal to the norm of v for all best, best approximations v. So it's uh, the best approximation of minimal norm. And uh, we'll see that for Hilbert spaces, at least, uh, this is uh, uniquely, this makes you uniquely defined if the uh, set of best approximations is non-empty. OK, let me uh, first give you um, some notation. I think it's probably perfectly clear, but let me write it down anyway. The kernel of K, which I sometimes also write as the null space of K, oops, is defined as all elements u in x that maps that map to zero and on the other hand the range of k sometimes written as r of k or the image of k is the set of all v in y, for which the equation ku equals v is solvable. So there is a v in x such that, there is u in x, excuse me, such that ku is equal to v. Uh, for some reason, I always lose my mouse. Yeah. Um, also, um, I will not put um, cite these as, yeah, maybe I should. Lemma 2.11. The kernel of K is always closed. For a linear operator, linear continuous operator k, and uh, the range of k is not necessarily closed. And uh, the proof is simple. Let un be some sequence in the kernel of K. Let U n converge to some U. Then we have that K U n converges to K U since K is continuous. And, but these are all zero, so K U is equal to zero as well. So we have that u is in the kernel of k, which means that it's closed. Now, uh, the range is not necessarily closed. Um, we just need an example for that. And for example, take um, x as L2 and y as L2. of all over Ryan and for some u which is infinitely uh, often differentiable and uh, actually fast decaying with all its derivatives um, the we look at the integral operator ku of x defined as 
I, it's, excuse me, Kernel. I want this to be a Kernel. And we have KU of X is the integral over R K of X and Y. Um, U of y dy, y r2, let's, let's take r here. Now, um, since k is in uh, c infinity, um, ku is in c infinity as well. Uh, so uh, this is a subset of C infinity functions, and as you know, this can never be closed with respect to the L1 or L2 norm. So it's already clear that uh, this uh, that uh, the ranges are not always closed. Okay, um, so now let's move on to Hilbert spaces. So now we assume that X and Y are Hilbert. And, um, oops. Um, the let me give you lemma 2.12. We have that for any operator k, linear continuous, we have that uh, rate, uh, range of k perp is the same as the kernel of k star, the adjoint of k, which I defined in the last lecture. And uh, also note, I don't remember if I uh, noticed that the perp, uh, that, 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 uh, this, um, that uh, the perpendicular space of a subspace is always closed, but it's now clear because the right-hand side is a kernel that's closed, so the left-hand side is um, closed as well. And the second thing is that the range of K star the closure of that is the same as the kernel of K perp. Okay, um, for the first one, assume that Y is in the kernel of the adjoint of K, then obviously we have that K star Y scalar product with X is zero for all X in X. I mean, this is clear because K star Y is zero. But that implies that y kx is zero from the definition of the adjoint. And uh, that means that y is in the range of k pub. Now, uh, for the other way around, let's assume that y is in range of k perp, then we have that in particular, the uh, um, y is uh, the scalar product of y with any um, element of the range of k is zero. So particularly for this one, and uh, this is exactly the same of k star y k star y by definition of the adjoint and that's nothing but the norm of k star y 
squared. Now, if it's that zero, then that means that k star y is zero, and that means that y is in the kernel of k star. Okay, adjoint, I should say. Okay, now for the second thing, for the second part, of course, we can also apply the first part for k equals to k adjoint. Then uh, the first one becomes r of k adjoint per is the same of the, as the kernel of k adjoint adjoint, and that's k. And uh, now we take the perp. And now uh, R of K star perp, oops, becomes R of K star perp, perp. So uh, that's the closure of K star. I already noticed that. So uh, we prove this. So uh, is it clear that we have to use the closure over here? Yes, because I mean the right hand side is always closed. This is the uh, this is a pub, so um, that's um, that is uh, closed, and so the right, left hand side must be closed as well. So leaving out the uh, the closure over there would leave us with the um, image of an operator with the range of an operator which might be open as we saw. Okay, and uh, yeah, and now we are ready to give some characterization characterizations of the least squares operator.